Well, good morning. Uh, this is Moses. Uh, I'm here with two brothers of mine. Uh, this is part of our, our weekly Harmony gatherings. We just sit around and, and talk about some stuff. Hopefully this discussion today will bless you and answer some questions that you might have. I want to introduce you to my friends. This is Shannon, and this is Dane. And uh, if you could guys take a few minutes. They're both from Lake Haven Church, right down the road from us here in Eustis. But take a few minutes and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your church, what you do there, and then we'll go from there. Okay, you want to start? Sure, yeah. Well, I'm Dane Massey, and uh, my wife is Lisa. We pastor Lake Haven Church. We moved here just a couple of years ago, uh, this month, actually. We've been here two years. And um, so we've been in ministry since 1988, Whew. which is a long time. That's a long time. <laughs> I graduated high school in 87, and I feel like I'm a million years oh, old. come on. Golly. <laughs> hmm. So... Uh, but yeah, we've uh, we've planted a church in in Georgia and associate pastor in a couple places and moved around a little bit and ended up here in Florida at Lake Haven Church and we love it. God's doing great. That's what I hear. So. That's what I can feel the disturbance and the force down the road, man. I can Shift feel it. In the third dimension. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I hear good things. And then you got this guy here. He's he's a staple here in Eustis. Tell yeah, us. Well, um, Our newest resident of the United States. <laughs> My name is Shannon, Shannon Carroll, and um, I've been in Eustis for 11 and a half years now, um, originally from South Africa, so my wife and I, my Corin, uh, we moved out here about, as I said, 11 and a half years ago and settled in and had children here and, and uh, have transitioned through a great church and church change and such, so it's been, it's been exciting. I've got a background in missions and in Africa, so it's good to be here. I believe God put me here and sent me here, so yeah. it's been great. And you are our newest resident. Yeah. Just got your citizenship here in America. That's, right. That's yeah, cool. Just, just a couple months ago. We'll Excellent. In a month or so. Yeah. Excellent. US My African American brother. That's right. I love it. I love it. American you've ever seen. Yes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, it's good to sit and talk with you. Every week we're gonna just like like we had talked about, we're gonna we're just gonna just Put a subject on the table and just go around and just chat about it. Hopefully we can answer some questions that people would have. So this week God put something in your heart you wanted to share. You thought that people would want to, that they would, it would help them. And so if you wouldn't mind, just kind of lay it out there. What is it that you kind of wanted to chat about this morning? Yeah, well, what I had on my heart is about <clears throat> renewing the mind. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a term used in the New Testament. Um, it's really, when you look at, at what renewing the mind is, <clears throat> it's really the mission of of what we do as a church. I mean, if you think about it, why do people come into this building? Uh, and, and why did God put us here as pastors, you know, to, to, to serve them? And uh, it's to facilitate uh, an environment where their mind is renewed, where transformation takes place. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what the church is about, you know. Uh, we reach the lost, but what do, you, what do you do when you get them? Yeah. You know, because... If they're like me, when I got saved, my, my thinking was messed up, you know, and I mm -hmm. had, I mean, a mixture of what I thought serving God was uh, that was entangled in a lot of works and trying to please God and trying to modify my behavior and trying to quit this and stop doing this and, and start doing this and all the things that I thought. Gets heavy, know, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, tiring. And it gets, mm. it's like getting in a web, uh, mm. you know, tangled in a web. It gets, the, the more you try to move in that system, the mm -hmm. tighter it gets mm -hmm. and the worse it gets. And I think there's a lot of believers out there and they're, they're genuine. You know, they love God, but they don't, they don't really know what it means to serve God in the new covenant. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of mixture of mm -hmm. the old covenant and the new and they don't understand why we have a new. Mm -hmm. So if you could take a second, one of the things I'd love to do with this weekly thing is to um, explain some of the church terminology. So you say new covenant, old covenant, pause it for a second, just park there and explain that just briefly so yeah. someone would understand what you mean. Yeah, well the Bible's divided into two testaments, Old Testament, New Testament. Mm -hmm. Testament, it just means a covenant. Mm -hmm. The old covenant is, is uh, before Jesus, Mm -hmm. You know, God dealt with the nation of Israel. So basically, and, it's just an agreement, kind of a, yeah, a, an arrangement a, an between agreement. God and His people. Yeah. A covenant mm -hmm. is the 
the strongest agreement between two parties that right. can exist. It's right. a, uh, marriage is a covenant, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's an agreement between a husband and a wife, legally and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And so the Old Testament is an old agreement between God, the nation of Israel, and other nations that were included in, in that. And it was based on the law, it was based on uh, what they had to do for God in their own strength, in their own effort. Nobody was born again in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Nobody had the Spirit of God living in them in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit would come on them mm -hmm. uh, for certain tasks, but, but it's different because in the New Covenant, Jesus is, is the divider of the Old and the New. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John is, is an introductory period from the Old to the New. And Jesus brought the New Covenant. And so Hebrews 8, 6 says we have a better covenant established on better promises. So it's better than the old. Mm -hmm. And so, but if a lot of people were like me when they got saved, you know, uh, not only was the law of the old covenant the problem, but the, the elementary principles of the world work uh, in proportion to, or, or like the law did. In other words, we're to, we tell our children from, from real small, Santa Claus will come if you're good, right? You know, at least that's what my parents told yeah. me. Yeah, you know? naughty or nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're not, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you get you get the promotion if you perform well enough. I yeah. got ripped off. I was Jewish. I had no Santa. Yeah. It was terrible. <laughs> you did get ripped off. I totally got ripped off. <laughs> Old covenant. <laughs> and, but also, it you know, it's it's like uh, in sports. Yeah. The the ones that get on the front page of Sports Illustrated yeah. are the ones that perform the best. Yeah. The ones that get the trophy yeah. at the end of the high school football year are the ones that perform the best. Yeah. And so that's, that's, in, that's in our system yeah, just, of yeah. the world. And yeah. so we have a performance-based system. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that's how the world plays. That's the rules of the world. But when you get saved and, and you come to Jesus and you, and you get in Christ, yeah. uh, that's what the word term in Christ means is you're now, you're now in what he accomplished. So now you're operating by an entirely different system. So you already got the reward. You've already got the diploma. You've already got the big contract. You've already got everything that the, you normally would have to earn. Right. He's given it to you already, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you live. Mm -hmm. Instead he of here, you. try right. to live it out to try to accomplish something, he accomplished something, now we live it out. Right, so, you know, and I'll use this, this phrase a lot when I, when I talk about this, that it's impossible for God to reward you with something that's already yours by inheritance. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that are trying to get God to reward them with peace and joy and healing and blessings and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and all the things that are already ours by inheritance. Right. Mm -hmm. They're ours. But yet they're trying to live a life uh, in such a way that they're, they're trying to get God, they're trying to earn it. You know, haven't I, haven't I read my Bible enough, God? Haven't I gone to church enough? Haven't I been nice to people enough? You know, how come all these things are happening to me? Right. And they're like, they're like the, product, the story of the prodigal son. You know, I, I, there's two stories in the story of the prodigal son. One's about the prodigal son. One's about the older brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Christians are trying to live like the older brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're working, 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 working to get something to get the father to give them something that's already theirs. Mm -hmm. You know, that prodigal son came home and the father reinstated him into the wealth that he had. Just, he came and repented and the father said, here it is, here's yeah. the robe, here's the ring, mm -hmm. here's the fatted calf, mm -hmm. you know, which must have been this calf in the stall that he's been saving prize. for a long time, yeah. you know, fatten him up. So the older brother comes home from working in the field He's out there working, and he probably passes by the stall that the fatted calf was in, and the fatted calf wasn't in there anymore. And he's thinking, Where's my calf? The, <laughs> the fatted calf, yeah. you know? And he comes in, he hears music, he hears, he hears dancing, he hears joy, you know? And he's thinking, the party started without me, you know? Uh, he thought he was the focus of the party. Yeah. He thought his work for the father entitled him to all of this stuff. And he came and he, and he said, you know, uh, I've been out working for you all this time. He said to his father, 
and you, you never gave me anything. Mm -hmm. Basically, he said, you, besides the fat, you never gave me a skinny goat. Besides the fatted yeah. calf, you know. And now this son of yours, wouldn't even call him his brother, this son of yours. Because when you're trying to work for something that's already yours by inheritance, one of the most prevalent things in your life is judgmentalism. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't see people uh, as a new creature in Christ because you're trying to earn it and you keep falling short of the grace of God because of your, uh, of your work. Yeah. And so, uh, but what's amazing was what the father said to the, to the older son. He said, all that I have is yours. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you talking about? What, mm -hmm. what, what, is, what are you, what is this mindset that you have? Everything that I have, if you want to, if you want to party, throw a party. Yeah. If you want a fatted calf, kill them all. Yeah. You know? They're yours. And I think that's where a lot of people are today is they're trying to work for God and get God's approval to live in this abundant life that Jesus said he came to bring us, you know, and they keep falling short of it. Yeah. They're not experiencing peace. They're not experiencing joy. They're not experiencing the healing power of God because they're out there working, trying to get it. Yeah. And it's like the father is saying, what are you, it's mm -hmm. all yours. Just come and get it, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And that's the way salvation is. We believe that about salvation. Mm -hmm. We believe that it's whoever will come and, yeah. and receive. God does that, but we do the rest kind yeah. of a thing. It but says, yet we draw a that line. Paul said that in Galatians, said, what's wrong with you people? Yeah. You started in the spirit, like you realized it was just God doing a work right. in you. And now you're trying to live it out by following rules. Like, stop, don't do that, you know? Right. Get back, get back, I, get back. I think the sad thing is that, that so many, um, it's such a fundamental issue. The, the Old and New Testament issue. I mean, so many of our churches, I'm sure you would agree with this, Moses, it's like people want to get their lives ready with God, so they'll pick up a Bible and start in Genesis or Leviticus or Deuteronomy, and they start reading through here. Or still I know people will say, you know what, I'm going to really get my life in order. You now I've got New Year's resolution. Yeah. I'm going to read through the Bible in a year if yeah. they even know about it. So, and all those things, they flip through Old Testament, New Testament, one from Psalms, one from Proverbs, one from totally the Old Totally confused. Testament. Exactly. I still. And I, I mean, yeah. I've sat in churches, and I I sat in churches. I grew up in a church that had good people, well-meaning people, but confused the heck out of me. Yeah. I mean, here one day the guy's reading in Deuteronomy, you know, and the next it's yeah. Leviticus, and then it's in Hebrews, and then it's I'm like they bounce around without any clear definition of what is where. And I think that is, that is stirred up. I think that's why so many churches, yeah. people in churches, just don't totally get confused. a clear idea. If you've that. got some years in the Bible. And then you sit under somebody who's all over the place. It's one thing because you kind of get it. Right. But if you're new and you have no mind of Christ, like you can't. And all of a sudden you're hearing someone preach through these Old Testament rules of if your kid misbehaves, stone him. Yeah. You know, and God's killing all these countries. Right. And like, like, I don't want to serve that God. Right. You know, it's yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Like, how how could God do that? Exactly. Right. Yeah. I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. So, so that being said, so like. <clears throat> What's the, what's the thing? What is the one thing? Like, what, is, what does somebody need to, how do we change their perspective? What do we do? I mean, how do you? I think what people need to understand is, and, and I don't think we as ministers have, as a whole, have done a good job of this. But I think when people come to Christ, they need to understand your identity has now changed. You know, it's, it's like when God told Abraham, you know, your name is no longer Abram. It's Abraham. So Abraham had to get used to that new name, that new identity. Mm -hmm. And God would call him Abraham. You know, it probably took him a few times, and he probably thought, oh, oh, that's me. Mm -hmm. You know, people walking down the street would call him, hey, Abram. And as he gets used to his new name, he stops responding to his old name. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people come into our, to our church, they get, they get born again. And, uh, and they come, they sit there, they're, they're like a blank slate. What they need to know is, when you came to Christ, he gave you a new identity. Now, the number one thing that you can do is learn who you are. Yeah. You've got a brand new nature now. You've got a brand new name now. It's, and so as awkward and as difficult as it would be for me to say, okay, Moses, your name is no longer Moses. It's Billy Bob. So... From now on, that one. from now on, well, you Lake County, it yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, it works for. I could be mayor. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And so, you, you know, that would be awkward to get used to. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you would have to start seeing yourself that way. Mm -hmm. Well, I just had this thought when you were saying that, like when, when people get married, the, the, the woman, she's no, like my, my wife, when I married her, she had a name. And now it's Robin's. Like, and so, the, I don't know if, like, in my, in my life, when I am out with her, and we run into people that she used to know, mm -hmm. and they don't know that she has a new name, she call, they call her Miss Trammell, it's kind of weird, because mm. that's just not who she is anymore. Mm. Right. And I guess that's kind of what you're talking about. Like, that's yeah. not who she is. She is now actually part of me. Mm. We're yeah. one. And so she is actually a new person. And I'm a new person, because we're together. And you got to try to live that whole thing out. So what would we do, for instance, this sounds foolish, but we get married, she's now Mrs. Robbins. Well, should we still get all of our mail and, and, and put on our bank account Meredith Trammell? No, she's Meredith Robbins. Right. That's yeah. her new name, that's who she is. I don't want to, you don't keep the old identity anymore. So I guess that's kind of what yeah. happens. We're now a new creation. I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite verses in all the scriptures is, is when Paul's talking to the church in Corinth, and he says, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has died. Behold, like you can see it. Look, there's a new person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All things. Everything's it's new. It's like Christ. you're not the same person you were mm -hmm. before you said yes. Mm -hmm. Like it's a to your identity, again, is like you said, is not wrapped up in who you used to be, not in uh, your old uh, failures and screw-ups and sins and what you used to do and your old habits. That's not who you are anymore. You're, you're the king's kid. Mm -hmm. You're a new guy. Yeah. You're a new gal. Yeah, and for most people, it's not just about the past either. A lot of people have a projected identity of what they need to become t to be okay with God. Yeah. You know, and, and you've got to forget all that. Yeah, you're already okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're ar that, I love, I guess, is it in Colossians where he says, because of Christ's death in his physical body, God has brought you into his presence as holy, blameless, and without single fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, exactly. it's already done. You're already in God. Like, and here's, I was, I was going to share this this week with my church, too. Like, are we really blameless? No. Are we without fault? No. Like, I, practically, I know. I know my life. I know I do wrong. But yet, in God's eyes, okay. he see like, you can do no wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, can you imagine, like, wouldn't you love that if your dad felt that way about you in real life? Like, no matter what you did, I could do no wrong in my daddy's sight. Like, wouldn't that be so warming to your heart, like secure and safe to know that that's how your dad felt about you? And that's how God, your ultimate father, feels about you. You can do no wrong. Yeah. How cool but, but, is that? Isn't because we, but we're in Christ, you know? Here we have been, we, we have his righteousness. Yeah. You know, where God sees us, we, he sees the blood of Jesus. Yeah. We, we're righteous in him. Yeah. Underneath there, there's some ugly stuff going yeah. on, but, you know, but when God's looking at it, he's like, perfect. Yeah. We're not, How cool. We, we've never been supposed to be righteous on our own. No. It's awesome. And it's this awesome. is where renewing of the mind really comes in. Because like you said, underneath there, there may be some stuff yeah. that is not what it needs to be. But you don't have to change that there's a difference between change and transformation yeah change is is the mentality that i think most people have that don't understand that who they are in christ change is is a process of becoming something that you're not you know i'm i'm not this so i've got to try to become this so what is what is your heart believing your heart is the the core of what you believe is i'm not right i'm not doing what i need to do and, and that always results in condemnation. But what transformation is, there, there's still a process that, that takes place. But transformation is becoming something that you are. Mm -hmm. you know. And so the scripture you were talking about there in Colossians, this is Colossians 2.6. It says, as you therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. So our walk is according to what we have received. Yeah. And he says, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the mm. tradition of men, mm. according to the basic principles of the world. If I perform, I'll right, get that's the reward. What you said, yeah. And not according to Christ. 
the, the finished work, the new covenant. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete yeah. mm -hmm. in him. Completely mm -hmm. done. Now, the, think about that. I mean, it, what if you woke up every morning and you just felt complete, mm -hmm. lacking nothing, nothing missing, nothing broken, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. nothing that I have to do to get God to do anything for mm -hmm. me. What if you woke up every morning and, and you had that peace flood over you where you just said, everything's good. I'm good. I'm good. You know, and that's the goal because the kingdom of God, Romans 15 says, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Yeah. Now, when he wrote that, he was talking about the rules and the regulations of what you can eat, what you can right. eat, what you can do, what you can't do. That's yeah, not really what Paul it's about. said, guys, that's not the kingdom. Right. The kingdom of God is a bunch of people who have been made right with God, righteousness, peace, because of what Jesus did, we have peace with God, nothing missing, nothing broken, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Here's what should be happening in our life every day. This is the normal Christian life. I know we talk about this and people think, well, that's like, sure, that would be a dream world. <laughs> well, this is the normal Christian life. Right, right. The normal Christian life should be an abiding sense and awareness of how right I am with God because of Jesus. An abiding sense and an awareness of the peace I have with God because of what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And the joy that I have every day as a result of not having to perform mm -hmm. to get God to do anything for me. Mm -hmm. He's already willing to do everything that I need. Yeah. Whatever I need, he's ready. Mm -hmm. That's some pretty solid advice right there. It's, it's, it, <laughs> and you think about it, that is, that is what Jesus said I came to bring. Yeah. I came to bring abundant life. Yeah. Life like you've never seen it before. And nothing that you just listed on the Jesus list is external. Right. Nothing. Mm. Right. Nothing. But yet if you have all that, the, the fruit at the end of your branches will be beautiful. Mm -hmm. If right. you have all that going on inside, what are people going to see? So They're not going to see a miserable guy walking up and down the road uh -huh. or some guy working frantically to get peace when he's peaceful. I just had this thought when you were, when you were saying this. I'm like, imagine, if you will, a guy who has their, their, their rich uncle dies and, and, and you inherit you know, $20 million and, and they give it to you, lump sum, boom, there it is. It's in your account. It's in your account at your disposal. Now, how stupid would that be? for that guy to wake up every morning, put in 70 hours a week to try to make money. Like, not because he wanted to do something he loved. Forget that, that would be great. But like to work to make money. How crazy would it be to get up every morning diligently just dying at work to try to make money when there's 20 million bucks in your checking account? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make much sense, does it? No. That's exactly what we do. That's exactly, yeah, that's right. exactly what we do. <laughs> that's right. Every day. You know, it, was it scripture in Romans chapter seven where it says, that that we're that we're we've died to the law mm -hmm. that we would marry Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In other words, we were married to the law, but now we've died mm -hmm. so that we can be married to another to Christ. Yeah. And you think about a, a good illustration of this is like a wife who has been married for thirty years to Grumpy. Yeah. You know, and and Grumpy expected her. You're not talking up. about Shannon, no. right? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. We might better ask Carmen. Yeah, yeah, right. But she, for 30 years, Grumpy expected her to get up every morning, yeah. fix his breakfast, get everything ready for him, yeah. clean the house, do everything. It's just a bunch of rules, a bunch of obligations. And for 30 years, she serves Grumpy. She never feels like she can please him. He's, he's a taskmaster. He's always like you never can do enough for him. He's grumpy. Mm -hmm. And for 30 years, she's married to grumpy until one morning she gets up, rolls over and looks at grumpy and he's dead. You know, and then she goes through the grieving process and she meets Mr. Wonderful. And now he's talking about you. Oh, yeah. Now I'm talking about Shannon. <laughs> so she meets Shannon, Mr. Wonderful. And he's not married, you know. And all of a sudden she gets married. Yeah. She's married to another. Grumpy's dead. Mm -hmm. the, the Mr. Obligation is dead. Mr. Mr. Taskmaster's dead now. Mm -hmm. But now she's married to Mr. Wonderful. And he says, now listen, 
I don't want you to get up in the morning and make my breakfast. I'm going to get up and make breakfast for you. And I don't want you to, to clean the house. I'm going to hire a maid, and you never have to clean the house again. Hopefully our wives are not watching this. Yes. Right. Okay, yeah, just for the record. Yeah, yes. they could get some yeah. bad ideas. <laughs> well, if you think about that, when she wakes up the next morning, the first thing, because of what she's done for 30 years, the first thing that she's going to want to do is her feet are going to hit the floor. She's going to think, i got to make breakfast. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know. And she, she rolls out of bed, and he grabs her, and he says, no, not today. Yeah. You just lay here. Isn't that liberating? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where we've, we've come, we've, we're divorced from the law, mm -hmm. from the obligation, uh, mm -hmm. from, from thinking that we have to do this all the time, mm -hmm. just, just, to, just mm -hmm. to please, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and now we're in Christ. Jesus has accomplished everything for us. Yeah. We never have to work. And another day of our life. And Daniel, what you're saying is exactly what Paul was writing in the book of Galatians, chapter 4. You know, he says, he talks about you observing special days and months and seasons and years. That he, you know, he says, he's talking, you guys are going through this, like, he's talking about the gift of faith. And then, of course, he goes into the whole example and later in that chapter with Hagar and Sarah, mm -hmm. the, two, the two women representing two covenants, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, the yeah. slave and the free. And right. Exactly. Right. Right. That's a great illustration too. With and I encourage people to go read that in Galatians about about uh, the free woman and the bond woman, mm -hmm. yeah. because they were trying to live in the same house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's Hagar. Mm -hmm. She's produced a child in the flesh. You know, mm -hmm. Ab uh, Abraham's efforts. You know, and then you got Sarah. Mm -hmm. The promise came. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, but yet they're trying to live in the same house. And God came to Abraham, and He said. The, the bond woman's got to go. Mm -hmm. I want you to kick her out. Now think about how hard that had to be mm -hmm. because she's the mother of his child too. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of endearment here, there too, you know? Mm -hmm. And he has to go to her and say, adios. Gotta go. You're out of here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. here, here's the lesson. Works of the law and the work of the spirit, law and grace, they can't live in the same house. There nope. cannot be a mixture. Mm -hmm. You have to totally abandon. Mm -hmm. This is where renewing of the mind comes in because if people don't realize this and really meditate on the new covenant to where your identity mm -hmm. becomes something that you're, you're used to, mm -hmm. then you're always going to default to the mm -hmm. flesh. Mm -hmm. And when, when Romans chapter 8, 1 says, there's therefore now no condemnation mm -hmm. to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, who don't try to accomplish all this by the flesh, but by the work of the spirit. Mm. Yeah. All the whole chapter of Romans 8 is a contrast between flesh and spirit. Mm. By the work of the spirit. And see, that's one of the things that, that I wanted to mention today, which was uh, that's the one thing that we, that we are called to. There's something that we have to do. And by the work of the spirit. <clears throat> so he wants to do something in us. But Romans 12, I think it's Romans 12, 1 or 2, says, and, and I, my Bible, New Living Translation, doesn't say renewing the mind, but it's the same thought. It just says yeah. don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Changing the way you think, that's renewing exactly. the mind, same thing. But I, it's a, there's one word in there that's huge. Let. 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 See, that's the only, we don't have to go out and try to get it, but we have to, change the posture of our heart and say, okay, God, I'm going to let you do this. Like, I'm no longer going to try to do it. Now I'm going to be still and let you. you got to give, it's kind of weird because he's the creator of heaven and earth mm -hmm. and we're just these little people, but that's the way he set it up. We have to let him do it. Right. you gotta, you got to humble yourself and say, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. Now, he, here's my... Um, it's like a computer, a yeah. brand new computer. It's an empty hard drive. Okay, Lord, you, you, you save me, right? Okay, you save me. Now, I have, so I'm clean. I'm brand new. So I have an empty hard drive. Okay, God, do your thing. Yeah. And just let him do it. Yeah. Because if you start up a new computer and press print, nothing's going to come out. Right. So, so you've got to let the hard drive be filled. So what, what are you going to fill your hard drive with? And that's the key, and the I thinking, think that's yeah. what letting is all about. Right. Is about I have to let the word of Christ rule in my exactly. heart. Exactly. Right. I have to let the peace of God rule in my heart. So I've got to take His promises 
and renew my mind with that. I've got to reprogram this hard drive with the promises that are that are, that are in Christ. Right. You know, and not right. all this other. Well, I mean, what you were saying, I mean, the very thing you're saying, transfer, uh, you know, renewal of mind in Romans 12, 1, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. So the transformation that comes out in the practical, yes, we know from God's looking, we are made perfect. Right. You know, we have come to him, we're, faith, we're righteous by faith alone, not by works, by faith alone. That's, that's right. what's given us that righteousness. But how is this transformation going to come place mm -hmm. by changing the mind? Right. So there is an activity. But I mean, it also, the activity is to allow our mind to be, to renew to these new, this new game. I once heard somebody say, uh, you know, I come from a country where we have rugby and cricket are two, one or two of our biggest sports, not like here, not baseball and football. Right. But can you imagine trying to play one of those games with the rules of the other one? You can't. You, you can't. Yeah, I've you never tried to dribble it. a football. That would be you kind know, of tough. That would be kind of tough. You've got to be able to release the rules of one and, and without learning the rules of the other. I came to this country and I couldn't understand why you guys can just throw a ball forward. I mean, in rugby, yeah. that would make it rugby an easy game if you could right. just throw every ball forward. You right. know, like, how does that work? Right. Until I learned the rules of the game and I was like, oh, now I see the skill. Right. Because it kind of looks stupid to, mm -hmm. I didn't understand the game. It's yeah. Like, you can't play, and, and we get we have to renew our minds. So this is a different this is a different way of looking. It's a way, different way of seeing things. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times have you gentlemen heard in in, in churches too, um, how people will say, "Well, if I just do my part, then God can do that." You know, God's yeah. not going to do anything until I do my part. Yeah. And we feel like we've and use what you said, the bond and the free. It feels almost like if I just strain and strive and try real hard you know then god can god can see what i've done and say okay well now i'll step in i'll take it that last little bit for you mm -hmm. when you're when you're exhausted now i can do the rest but it's almost like we're, actually we're it's all he's ever said is just come to me yeah just come to me yeah. just come to me just a lot of people have the so idea just come to me why does god you know, and I thought about this. It's not a scripture, but a lot of people think it is a scripture. God helps those that, that help. Yeah, exactly. Us. We should do a the whole thing on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's plenty That's of those. Exactly right. yeah. But uh, anyway, lost my train of thought. But you mentioned something a while ago, uh, Moses, about Second Corinthians chapter five, and then you mentioned something about letting. I've, I've got to. I've, there, there's a letting God do what what he want, what he should only only he can do. Yeah. But there's also this is not just about us being in Christ, you know, it's not just about us becoming whole and seeing ourselves the way that we should see ourselves, and that, that's important, but it's also about seeing other people yeah. the way that God sees them, because 2 Corinthians 5, where it says, if any man be in Christ, let him be a new creature, uh, or he is a new creature, if you, if you look at the Greek, you know, which is like, I'm not a Greek scholar by any means, but if you go back and look at the original language of that passage, it says, if any man is in Christ, allow him to be a new creature. Hmm. And he's actually talking to other people. Because the context before that is, you know, we, we knew Christ. We, we should not know one another, each other, after the flesh. Mm -hmm. So in other words, don't look at someone who says they're a Christian and hold them to their old identity. Don't say, oh, there's, there's Dane. Um, Let's just say you used yeah. to sell drugs. Yeah. You don't. But, oh, he says he's a Christian. He's here at church. He's worshiping. But we know better. Right. Don't hold him to what his old identity was. Let him live it right. out. It's that whole idea of the person who gives their life on their deathbed. Oh, no way. No way. No, he really is. Yeah. If it was genuine conversion then it was, and genuine repentance, then right. he's really a new Christian. You can't say, well, I've been a Christian for 30 years, and he did it on his deathbed, and he, was, he killed that guy, and he robbed that bank. And nah, nah. No, if it was real, he is. He is. Yeah. He really is. And it, it doesn't even have to be as extreme as, as selling drugs. It could be just limiting people to the flesh and not realizing the potential of God in them. Yeah. Because right now, you know, you, you know, here you are sitting here and you've got issues in your life and yeah. you're, you're a human being just like I am. Yeah. But inside you is the potential to tap into God's power and speak a word into my life or, or lay hands on me or whatever and bring a manifestation of the kingdom of God into my life. Yeah. But if I limit you to the flesh, 
I'll never tap into to the, the potential of what God wants to do in my life because we're the body of Christ. Mm. And, and God works through the body. Mm. Most everything you've ever received from God actually came through other people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't want to admit that. Most of, the, most of the revelation that I have of God that I walk in today, it came through other people. Sure. And that's because we're the body. Mm -hmm. You know, we're connected. Made in together. His image to be like Him. Right. It makes sense. And so I have to, I have to renew my mind to realize that when I'm with Shannon sitting in his office, you know, he's not just an employee at our church. He's a son of God. Mm -hmm. He has God the Holy Spirit living on the inside of him. And I have to honor that, mm -hmm. and I and I have to reverence that, mm -hmm. and allow him to be the new creature that he is, yeah. mm -hmm. because everything about him is new, mm -hmm. and it actually says all things are of God. Yeah. Wow. So everything about you now is of God. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. you're wall to wall, God on the Stuff. inside. Yeah, you know the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit that hovered over the face of the deep in Genesis. As big as, as he seems, he lives on the inside of you. Hmm. And you have the potential to bring a manifestation of heaven into my life. Hmm. It's huge. And it's huge. Uh, so I have, hmm. but, but I limit that expression of God through you when I don't allow you to be the new creature that you are. Yeah, wow. that's just so true. That's that good. True. I have to renew my mind to that because sometimes we can cut up and you have a personality just like I have a personality. And, hmm. you know, Let's face it, there are certain personalities that we like better than others sure. as human beings. We yeah. just get along with people better, you know, but that's the flesh, yeah. you know. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, Paul said to that church there in Corinth, he said, don't know one another after the flesh. He said, we no longer even know Christ after the flesh. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. but know one another after the spirit. Now that word spirit there means the work of the spirit that has been done on the inside of you. Yeah. I have to know you like that. Yeah. Mm. And That's so it, it's, you know, we would, we would have uh, meetings and things different if we yeah. realize that. When people come to church, yeah. when they realize, and, and you, you, I, don't want to, I don't want to elevate a pastor as the man of God and, and everybody else is under him because, you know, in Christ we're all one. But when you think about an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, a gift that God has given to the church, to the body of Christ. When people come into our churches, they need to realize the potential of the kingdom of heaven being released mm. in, in a brand new measure in my life today is only going to happen if I believe that Pastor Moses has a word for me today. Mm. That's and coming I'm, straight from the heart of God. Yeah, and yeah. I'm going to pray for him, and I'm going to believe that he's going to hear from God. Yeah. And I'm going to believe that when I'm when I'm here at church, I'm going to believe that God is going to speak to me through my pastor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to believe that God's going to speak to me through my congregation, mm -hmm. you know, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm That's going to good. believe that God's going to speak to them through me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul said that too. He didn't. He said, I, I came not only to encourage you, but I, I want you to encourage me. Yeah. Right. And he's, you know, he's Paul. He's the man, right? Yes. And he's saying to all these yeah. regular folks, I want you to pour into me too. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a family you, affair, you know, isn't guys it? guys remind me, this is so good. Uh, I need that reminder too. But I re remember years ago when I was first born again, I had this little, this little church that I was going to in this little farming town that I was in high school at. And I rededicated my heart to, life, to the Lord and had an incredible experience, you know, the Spirit. And I was just amazed. And I remember that pastor, and you guys just reminded me, he used to come to me every time we get together. And he was excited. And he was like, so what's God been showing you? Yeah. And he was like sitting on the edge of his seat. Yeah. And he was asking, and I always thought, what do I know? You, 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 you know everything. <laughs> right. You're the pastor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And, but I remember him. It was always so striking to me that this, he was so hungry to hear yeah. about what my experience with God was and what I had, you yeah. know. And, and I was like, wow. Well, when you first come to Christ, I mean, I, I haven't been a Christian probably as long as you guys have, but man, when I first came to Christ, it was like insane things that were happening. Like it was. It was like uh, in fast forward, mm -hmm. but after a while, you know, even though I, you know, I'm teaching every week, but still, I, I would say that there's more stuff going on in a brand new believer than there is in the guy who's been doing it for a long time. Like when you first come to Christ, I don't know if you guys remember, like I felt like I personally could change the entire planet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like God was doing crazy things in my world. So, 
that new guy, like we should treasure that new guy that, that just comes to Christ and yeah. find out what's going on because mm. he might have something for me that I, that I needed yeah. to hear. There's one last thing I wanted uh, to mention and um, talking about letting God transform you, letting God change the way you think. Um, you said something earlier about the performance-based culture that we live in and we have to get out of that whole thing. There's some statistics I wanted to, to share, and I, you know, it's the internet, so who knows, but um, according to Google, they say that they have 100 billion Google searches per month worldwide. That's 3.3 billion per day worldwide. And it also says on the internet, and this is a wide range, so we can, you know, do whatever we want with it, but the average American will see 600 to 3,000 ads per day, TV, magazines, your phone, that's the big one now, the computer, newspaper, whatever it is, we're, billboards, we're seeing all these things. And so if we enter this world as a baby with a blank hard drive, we have 300 to 6,000 things being put into our mind every day that programs us into that performance-based thing. And all these ads, if you think about what they say, if you melt them all down, they basically say that your life isn't as good as it should be, but if you have this, it will be. And so that's how we view everything. So we still feel that same way. Jesus saves us, great, but if I do this, my life still isn't good enough. So if I just have this, a little bit more Bible reading, if I give a little bit more in the plate, if I go on another mission trip, if I open another door for an old lady, then God. <laughs> so what, what do we do? I mean, if we're, how, do we com- how do we compete with that? I mean, you're driving down the road. We've got our phones. We're in our cars. We're, what do we do when we're being bombarded with all these things that are, re- that, make no mistake, whether you're reading your Bible, you're reading the Koran, you're reading the National Enquirer, whatever you're doing, your mind's being renewed every second right so what do we do well I, I think that's the key is realizing that realizing that there is a world that's trying to program my mind and second corinthians 4 4 says satan is the god of this world the cosmos is the greek word mm-hmm. the system of the world so and, and people don't, don't don't really see that they just see advertisements and they see what the news media says and they, they hear think all it's this harmless stuff and, and they don't realize that there's an underlying <laughs> system behind that mm-hmm. and and the one who's over that system is Satan himself. Little clockwork orange going on here. Yeah. You guys remember the movie? Yeah. Clockwork, you know, they're watching this stuff and it's making, the, the, he's watching evil, he becomes evil. That's right. just, but people don't realize that it's just a game. Right. It's just an ad. It's just an ad. It's just a, no, it's not just anything. And if you, if you put your life on cruise control and just go through life, mm. you will be conformed Mm-hmm. to the world is the, the scripture you, you mentioned there in Romans 12 mm-hmm. you know you're going to be conformed to that but you've got to be transformed and see he, Jesus said in the parable of the sower he said explaining it to the disciples you know he said some fell on a stony ground you know and some fell among thorns and 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 all that but when he explained it he said uh, the, the word is the seed and we've got to realize that God's word is way more powerful than any advertisement, mm-hmm. anything. And when we plant that word in our heart, mm-hmm. it's going to produce the, the fruit of what God said it would, mm-hmm. would produce. And so, but realizing it. And I think so that's we, where we, that's come where we have in. to come into the let God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've got to realize all right, what are you going to look at? Right. You know, are you, are you going to believe what God's saying to you? Mm-hmm. Or are you going to believe what the well, Budweiser is saying to you? Saying to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and you've got to Ephesians chapter four and verse twenty-two uh, talks about how you know you were uh, this, you you were you were a sinner, you you were like this, and then it says, but now put on the new man. Yeah. Let put on the new man, be renewed. And, and verse twenty-two talks about that. Verse twenty-four talks about, I think it's 24, talks about, you know, uh, the new man has been created in righteousness mm. and holiness mm. and truth. But the, the, the key word is, is the verse in between that, and be renewed in the area of your mind. Mm. Instead, you let have. the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Yeah. Yeah. Put on so, your new nature, created to be like God. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Truly righteous and holy. That's who you are. That's who you that's are. That's your new identity. Yeah. So that's in me. Yeah. But I got to put it on. Yeah. You know, because it's not going to do any good just to be in me. Yeah. And me be around people and act like a jerk. Right. So <laughs> I've got I've got to put this new nature of love and righteousness in God. I got to yeah. put this on. How do I do that? He tells you. Be renewed in the area of your mind. Yeah. So practically, how does that happen? Get the promises of God in the new covenant yeah. that tell you who you are, what you have, and what you can do. Yeah. Like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens yeah. me. You know. How would I know? So that, how would I know unless I read? So we, right. if, we, if we could end this discussion in a really, uh, there's a practical application to a highly spiritual thing. It's so simple. Probably not what everyone wants to hear, but maybe turn off the TV and turn off the phone a little bit and grab your Bible. Yeah. I mean, I know that sounds like, oh yeah, that, after that whole hour tr talk, that's what you're going to give me. Right. But I mean, isn't that where it is? It's the deepest Spending thing time that you could ever give people. with God's Word. Yeah. And I, I've said this at our pulpit a hundred times, probably will a million more times. If I take a sea sponge and I take it and I dunk it into a bucket of blue paint, what color is it coming out as? It's coming out blue. So if I take my life and shove it into that Bible, it's, that's what's going to come out of it. You know, if I sit in front of the TV all day and get fed by the system of the world, that's the way I'm going to live. I can say I'm a Christian, but I'm still going to act that way because that's what I'm feeding my hard drive. So yeah. if I say I'm a Christian, well, there's Christianity right there in that book. So let's find out who God made you to be and live it out according to what it says, not right. according to what you know, the TV says, or the right. internet says, or whatever, like, so, kind of basic, it is basic, to wrap it up, but it's true, but it is, it is profound and powerful, mm -hmm. you know, it, I mean, the, the greatest revelation that you could give people, the deepest theology that you could get into is real simple, read the Bible, amen, <laughs> you amen. know, get it in you, and, and not just read the Bible, don't just like go through it in a year, yeah. But get you get the promises of God. Right. So, Meditate you know, on them. Yeah, I was about to say that. Because hang I out think, there I, for I a while. Not everybody. I mean, we get different people that are naturally more adapted at being readers. Yeah. And there's people that, that would watch this would say, "Man, I just don't like to read." Yeah. But it, but it is. The principle is sound. The word of God is the revealed word and will of God. Right? Yeah. We believe it's the word of God. Getting that in our hearts, whatever you know, if, whether it's videos on stuff. I mean, yeah. they do Bibles. Or whether it's whether it's audio, read, yeah. you know. But being exposed, going to church. Yeah. But there's a lot of movement about people don't going to church, and yeah. you know, there's there's so much information through our phones and, and you know listening and listening yep. to stuff. You can put on, uh, yeah. just so you'll know, U version on your phone. You can get it. It's free. It has every version of the Bible on there, and yeah. you can press a button and it will read it to you. Yeah. Talk that's about what lazy. I, that's what I've got here. Right? It's I'm perfect. The internet, but you like can <laughs> drive to work. Press yeah. play and just drive and listen to the Word of God that promises it's going to do something to you right. if you listen to it. So just press play and drive. Yeah. You get 20 minutes to work, 20 minutes back. And, Here, and here's just something listen. I recommend. There, there's, a, there's this cool website. And if, I, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but if you go to Google and you just look up personalized uh, in him scriptures, personalized in him scriptures, just Google it and it'll pull up the website. But you can put your name in there. And hit nice. the button, and it'll give you every New Testament promise of who you are in Christ with your you, with your name in it. That's and awesome. you can print that out. Say that again. What's the name of it? It's, it's like pers it's, uh, just just put in Google the search bar, personalized in Him Scriptures. Okay. And you'll find it in there. But uh, and you can print it out. You can put it on your iPad or have yeah. paper copy. But it's going to tell you who you are. So instead of the scripture saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, it says, Moses can do all things through Christ. Mm. And it, it speaks to your heart. Yeah, it's, yeah you know? certainly. And, and so you're, you're getting used to your new identity. Yeah. It's God telling you who you are now. Yeah. You know, you're not the old person anymore. You're not insufficient. You don't yeah. lack anything. Right. You're complete in Christ. Moses is complete in Christ. Amen. And the goal is, and see, when, uh, when you're renewing your mind like that, Here's what's happening behind scenes. The Holy Spirit is doing a transforming work on the inside to get everything that God has done on the outside. Mm, amen. That has nothing to do with you. All right. you're doing 
is renewing your mind. Is letting him do it. He is doing the work. Yeah, right. That's it. Yeah, and amen. believing it, right? I mean, amen. the voice is reading it. It's, it's one thing to, and I don't know if you guys ever had that, but in the year, in, I, I was exposed to a lot of that, and, and you can almost let it become, if, if you just, if you think that it's all just about listening to it or just about reading it, it's not. It's not a work. You can do that. You can take that to extreme. It's about using that as a tool to get it in your heart, you know, yeah. just like the Bible says in three times in the New Testament, it quotes the Habakkuk scripture where it says the just shall live by faith. In other yeah. words, it's not, it's what we believe. Right. We're going to live. We're going to, mm. this whole thing is about what we believe. Yeah. So it's about, it's about conditioning your belief system, understanding while you're reading this, what do I believe about this? Ask yourself the question, if you're reading something, what am I believing about yeah. this? Where do I stand mm. in this? We do read too fast. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. It's not just about blah, 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 blah. I can read through six chapters a day. Yeah, that's the you thing. Know. People try to do these daily plannings yeah, and know, chapter a day, chapter a day. No, sometimes it's like one. I read, I'm preaching this week out of, I read through, I was reading Matthew. I read one sentence out of Jesus' mouth. And I was like, Err! let's spend an hour talking about that one. And I've spent the whole week now meditating on this thing exactly. and letting it do its work and stuff. See, that's, yeah. that's exactly yeah. it. It's not about the amount that you read. Yeah. It's about exactly that. Yeah. Amount it reads you. Mm. All right, well, why don't we call it a day? I hope it's been helpful uh, to you in your walk with Jesus. And if you have not started a walk with Jesus, now's a great time to just close your eyes, tell them that you're sorry for the sin that you've uh, had in your life and that you want a new way of living and a new identity. And just ask them to take over, and he will. God bless.